Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, this is Eric once again with another activity. And today we are going to look at the object tracker. So that is our object detection. And uh, we are going to go straight to the code. So let us see how we are going to go about it. So first and foremost, we are going to use an extension that will help us to be able to program our machine so that it will be able to locate the objects and say the name automatically. So that's what we'll be doing. So we go to our add extension and we are going to use um, the object detection extension. So as you can see, uh, we have various modules at the add extension uh, area, and we are going to uh, use the object detection that helps us to identify objects from image. So we'll be doing that. So I've selected that, and we are going to wait for the models to be loaded. Then we'll go on to our code. Okay, so now our object detection extension is ready. So we go straight to the code. So to begin with, uh, we are going to use an image that has objects that we would be able to scan and uh, allow the machine to detect the object and see the names of the objects. So we are going to upload that image as our backdrop. So for now, I will turn off my camera and use the image as our backdrop. Okay, so the image is on the computer. So to do that, we go to choose backdrop, choose backdrop. Then we go to upload backdrop. So we go to upload backdrop, then uh, we go and select where the image is. So um, okay, so this is the image kits and bus. So we are going to select that. So the image is important at the moment. Okay, now our image has been uploaded. So the next thing we are going to do is to choose a sprite and we are going to select uh, the square box to use as our sprite. So in this activity, we are not going to use Toby. We are not going to use Toby. So um, Toby, uh, we are going to delete Toby for this activity. And uh, we are going to use uh, the square box. Let me change the color. I think I prefer pink. That's okay. So now we are we are ready to go. So we begin with the coding. So we are going to begin with the event that we want our code to begin when green flag is clicked. So we begin with that. So when green flag is clicked. Right, so we have our code ready. Then the next thing we want to do is to be able to analyze the image, analyze the image. So in analyzing the image, we go to the object detection uh, palette then we choose analyze image. So analyze image this time round, it is not from a live feed. So we are going to select stage because we are analyzing it from the image. So we analyze image from the stage. Okay, now that we have done that, the next thing will be that uh, when we analyze the image, it is going to create bounding boxes for us in addition to our square box. So in order not to conflict that with our square box, we would have to uh, hide 
our uh, bounding box so that it doesn't conflict. So we have our bounding box showing hide. Okay, so now that we are done, the next thing we have to do is that in our activity, we want the machine to be able to locate the objects and say the name automatically. That is what we want it to do. And to get the name updated automatically, I have to create a variable. And basically a variable is like a storage place for text or numbers. So I'll create a variable and give the name object. So I go ahead and create a variable. So then I'll give the variable a name object. And I say, okay, so now we have our variable created. So now that our variable object has been created, I have to set the object to zero. So here we have set variable. And so I have to set the object to zero. So that's what we have, set object to zero. Now, the reason why we have to set the object to zero is that uh, maybe in one instance, I can have three objects in an image. And at another instance, I can have five objects. And I don't want the number of objects that are analyzed to be increased. That is, I don't want it to be added, the current number of objects to be added to the previous ones. So I want uh, every time that the machine is analyzing the objects or the images, it should be able to reset. It should be able to reset for the number of objects. So we should reset to zero and be able to what, identify the objects. So that's why we have to set object to zero. Okay, so now that we are done, the next thing we want to do is to have blocks to control this, to help move uh, the sprite to different objects. So that's what we want to be able to do. And there are three main things we want uh, this code to do. So first, I want my sprite to be able to go to different locations and places and um, identify objects. I want my sprite to also be able to get the size of the object and also to be able to say the name of the object. So that's what we want uh, the sprite to be able to do. So now, we would set uh, blocks that would help us to control that. And so we are going to make use of the repeat, repeat until that is a condition that we are going to use, repeat until, and we would have to set uh, some parameters within an operator to be able to uh, determine the condition that we are setting. So all we are seeing is that when we get to the object detection palette, we want to get the number of objects, the number of objects that are available in the image. And we want to be able to set the number of objects, you know, that it will scan. So we are going to use the operator equals to. So we'll put this in our uh, repeat, uh, in our repeat block and we are going to see, get the number of objects and the input that we want it to be equals to is the objects. So the variable that we set, so repeat until. So get the number of objects should be equal to our variable, which is the object that we want to be able to, to scan. So that's what we have, okay. So now we have this code completed. The next thing we want to do is to be able to change objects by one, change object by one. And the reason why we want to set that is that we want to be able to have the objects always to be able to count count so once it identifies a number of objects it should count so we should see the count so if there are three so first object one two three so we want the 
the, the, the analyzing of the objects. We want it to change objects by one. So we will use this um, block change object by one. So we change this object. So change object by one. Change object by one. Okay, once this is done, the next thing that we will do is that we would uh, now look at setting of the size. So with size, we will go to looks, the looks palette and set size to width. So I want my sprite to be equal to the width or the size of the object. Once there's a big object, it should be able to uh, capture the width of that object. So we'll go to looks and set size, set size to 100%. So that's what we are going to use, set size to 100%. So in this case, what we would do then, what we would do then is that we would um, uh, say in our code that uh, the width, that is the class of the object. Now we are looking at the width when it comes to the size. So we change the class to width and we'll put this in here. And we'll change uh, the one to object. So set size, that is the width of the objects. We have to input our variable, which is the object in there. So we input our variable here. So the next thing that we'll look at is the location. And in the location, we will make use of the motion, motion palette. So we'll look for um, set X. So in the location, what we want to do is that in order for us to get the exact location or for us to uh, get the exact location trace, it can only be done if we have the X and Y position. That is the coordinates of the object detected. So we are going to set X to X position and we are going to set Y to Y position. So that's what we have, set X to X. So we'll make use of this. So class, so set X to X position. And this also would have to input our variable, which is object. Then also, We'll set Y to Y position. So we set Y to Y position. Set Y to Y position. We also have the object in there. Once we have set the X and Y position, we have our coordinates. So finally, we want it to be able to say uh, the name of the object. So we are going to make use of looks again. So we'll say, we should say the name that is the class of the object, what type of object it is. So we should say what type of object is it? It is. So um, that will be our final code. So we should say that for two seconds. You see that for two seconds. Okay, so our code is ready. So we want to test our code out. So this is how it's going to go. Right. So as you can see, the object is three and it scanned the number of objects that you have in there. So we go again. So person one, track two, and person three. So it's scanned and used the width of the object in question and gave us the name. Thank you very much. And I hope to see you in another video. Bye-bye.